Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to celebrate Epiphany Sunday with us, and there are many reasons for commemorating this day. One being the Magi coming to pay homage to baby Jesus, the Christ child. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? God of all worlds that are, like, like the, the wise men coming, coming from, from afar, far away, we, we would see that guiding star. We, we would, would follow them while they follow its light to the manger. There lies the little boy whom you appointed as bearer of your compassion and redeemer of all who would acknowledge their need of redemption. May the brightness of your sun illuminate our path as we strive to live as children of the light. May your word made flesh guide us through all the dark stretches and dark hours of our lives so that in your own good time, we may be welcomed by your mercy into the heavenly Jerusalem where there is no night ever. To this end, let this hour of worship prepare us for Jesus' sake. Amen. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king of Bethlehem's place. I bring to crown him again, King forever ceasing, never for us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guides thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sound to the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding. It is indeed epiphany. Uh, it is indeed the first Sunday of the new year, January 7th. It comes too fast every single time. A little orientation to the scripture, although you probably don't need one this particular Sunday. Epiphany Sunday, we celebrate the arrival of God to the world. God brings the light. God brings the light in the midst of darkness. And this Sunday, we hear the story of the Magi. We hear the story of the wise men coming from the east, traveling a long way, following a light, and arriving finally at the Christ child. You will hear the story in the only gospel it appears in, the Gospel of Matthew. Of our four gospels, the Magi is only in one. As you listen to the scripture, listen for themes of seeking and finding, worshiping, and the kindness and the love of God who wraps us all in God's love. And what is an epiphany? What is the epiphany event and experience for you? Listen for that as well. Where is the stirring of their, your heart? How does this message, how does this scripture, how does this holy moment call to you? 
where are you in this story? Let me invite Lynn to come on down front to share with us the message from Matthew. Good morning and Happy New Year. The scripture for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's funny how uh, scripture catches you. I've never uh, heard it. Thank you for reading it, Lynn. When we got to the part that said, and the Magi were, uh, saw that the star had stopped and they were overwhelmed with joy, all of a sudden I thought, yeah, their feet must have been really tired and they were just overwhelmed. Finally, finally we are there. It's the way scripture works. We hear it We hear it in our own ears, we hear it in our own hearts, we come to it from our life experience. God speaks to us all uniquely. So the common definition of epiphany, to have an epiphany, I'm sure you've heard that expression, it is defined as an unusually sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature and meaning of something. I had an epiphany. A second definition is an intuitive gasp, grasp of, sometimes a gasp too, an intuitive grasp of reality through something, such as an event, usually simple and striking, to have an epiphany, to have an awareness. Early Christians, the early Christian community and tradition Epiphany was one of the great three festivals of the early church. Um, The three being Easter, Pentecost, and Epiphany. Uh, Christmas was, I have said before, only a minor observance in the cycle of celebrations in the Christian faith. Easter, Pentecost, the birthday of the church, and Epiphany the arrival of the Magi to the baby Jesus. Epiphany or the twelfth night or the last day of Christmas festivals. You will remember Christmas is a season. It is not just one day. You may remember the 12 days of Christmas and all the things your true love gave to you. A partridge in a pear tree, three friends, three French hens. I always stop at five golden rings because that's just enough for me. Epiphany. We come to the end of our Christmas season. This is the place where our work 
of faith begins. Uh, the last day and the arrival of the Magi. Um, the arrival of the Magi, of these wise men as we call them, really actually doesn't focus particularly. The, the most important thing is not wisdom or intellect or even the kingly state, the kings, right? We call them kings. But it is something else. Um, they were likely astrologers from the region of Babylon, astrologers. They were likely incredibly educated, rich Gentiles trying to discern the will of the heavens. They looked to the skies to understand who they were and where they were supposed to be and what was going on, especially about a royal birth. And they found themselves at the crib of a Jewish baby, God's child. Their gifts that they brought would have been unusual. They would have been unusual for Joseph and Mary, that is. They were gifts that symbolized royalty, priestliness, and death. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The truth is, we do not know how many magi or kings were on that journey and came to Jesus. We only call them we three kings or three kings because there were three gifts. We remember that. There could have been more, there could have been less. We really don't know. So given all of that, given all of that, it is possible that the author of the Gospel of Matthew really, in fact, isn't that concerned with the Magi or the wise men at all. Their personal identity, their personhood, is far less important than the role that they play in helping us understand who Jesus is. In fact, understanding who Herod is. Both the Magi and Herod point to who Jesus is. There is this synergy this week in us understanding the light overhead drawing our attention, all else in the story drawing our attention to the baby Jesus, who in fact, probably when the wise men got there, was more like toddler Jesus, but there we are. It is a good Sunday as we learn and focus on the importance and the role of Jesus in the world. So, Herod was quick to catch on, as you heard in our scriptures. He was quick to assess the moment, even before anybody else understood. He was a terrifying leader in his own right. If you do a little study and research on Herod, he was brutal, he was cruel, he was even willing to kill and torture his own family. He was that kind of leader in the community. He reflects the reality that tyrants will often do what is necessary to protect their own power, Herod. And Herod knew the prophecy. He knew the ancient text. He knew that there was a time to come. He knew that there was a child or somebody coming who would transform and change everything. And so it shouldn't surprise us um, as the wise men come and say to Herod, where is the baby, that Herod was terrified. Where is the child, they ask, who has been born king of the Jews? You need to hold that question in your hearts. When we come to Lent, when we get back to the cross, you'll hear it again. Is this Jesus, the king of the Jews? So the wise men, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? We have been traveling and we have come to pay him honor and to revere him. So with this moment, Herod, our translation in the scripture says, was frightened. But another way to translate the word that describes Herod's feelings here is he was troubled. He was stir stirred up. He was even terrified. It is also worth noting in our story how often we hear that people are dealing with fear. Remember during our Advent season and uh, even beyond, 
the angels show up and the first thing they say, fear not. It must have been frightening, okay? So Herod is frightened. He is terrified. Now, he is terrified truly for another reason. His power is being questioned. What am I going to do? How is this going to work? Herod wanted to retain his power, so he tried to trick the wise men to learn where the baby was. But the wise men, the magi, were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. We also have a lot of dreams that happen in our scriptures. God's voice coming to us. God's voice coming to people. If we read further in this Matthew passage, you would hear Joseph, Jesus' earthly dad, is warned in a dream about the goals of Herod. Joseph gets their family up in the middle of the night, Mary, Jesus, and takes them to Egypt and away from Herod. Herod was a threat. Herod was so upset that he was tricked by the Magi. He had all children in and around Bethlehem who were two and under killed. It is terrifying. It is a challenging story to be sure. There is fear. There is faith. There is struggle. There is a journey to go and see. There is a light that shows the way. The God of our dreams who always intervenes when it is needed. Epiphany is the moment in our church cycle, our church story, our church calendar. Epiphany is the moment that it brings all of these things together. The fear, the faith, the light, the Christ, the salvation, the journey to and through it all. So who are we in this message? Where is it that we gather? How do we reclaim this epiphany moment? How do we claim it for ourselves and put it into our own life experience? I was having lunch with the staff this week, and that was the question at hand. What is the Magi story? What does the three kings mean to me? How do I do this? How do I understand it? Well, we're probably not going to follow a star at night all the way to go find Jesus, although we might look for light in our lives. We're probably not going to face somebody like Herod, but we see a lot of those people. We sit with a story. We imagine where we are. Do we have the faith to hear within our own dreams when God speaks to us? This new year, what is it that we want to claim from this scripture message? Do we want to listen more fully, push back on sin and violence more completely, look more deeply for Jesus in our midst? One of the traditions that may be a little bit easier than all of that in reclaiming the epiphany moment, there are traditions around this, and one of them is marking our doors with, a, with some chalk. Yes, that's right. Marking our doors with chalk. Maybe our homes, but maybe someplace we work. Maybe our homes, but maybe our children's school. Something like that. Marking the door with chalk. In the Exodus story, the Israelites marked their doors with blood so that God would pass over their homes. But on Epiphany... The faithful mark their doors with a chalk as a sign and a symbol of inviting God in. The chalk represents a common element of the earth and will fade over time. There is a tradition of writing on the doors uh, a, a letter that is assigned to the names of the wise men. I told you we don't necessarily know who they are, but there is a tradition about this. I like the tradition of writing on your doors May Christ bless this dwelling. Again, it is a moment in our Christian life or our Christian experience that echoes something in Lent. Then inviting evil to pass by or then inviting retribution to pass by. But this moment, inviting Christ's blessings. With this invitation to God, we push back on darkness, we push back on hate, we push back on death. 
we invite God to be with us again. And how important is that at the beginning of our year? Maybe, in fact, you don't want to use chalk. Maybe you got stuck when I said, I don't want to write in chalk on my door. Well, how about this? How about you get out your uh, printer or a piece of paper and write on it, may Christ bless this dwelling, and post it in your window or on your door. Use something that can be easily removable. But in that way, you connect with this tradition of epiphany, and you also give your neighbors an opportunity, or Grubhub people who come to your house, an opportunity to see who you are and to understand and hear the message of God's grace. Churches today are truly struggling. Every, every uh, letter, study, information I read, you do not need to go very far to understand. Many churches today are closing. Money, leadership, resources are being drained or are very low. Some people do not want to come to church or a religious place for a whole variety of reasons. Many of them reasonable, some of them just a lack of experience, some of them intimidated, scared, they don't have a positive experience with a person of faith or a faith group. But what if today you decided you would post on your door, may God bless this dwelling on your home, and it provided you with an opportunity from your home to share your faith just for a second, not proselytizing, I'm not talking, I don't want to do that, but to reach out and to testify that Christian faith means something to you and in your life. What if your home became that beacon of light that other people could follow, other people found? You yourself became that beacon of speaking hope and peace and love and joy in this world that we know is so incredibly challenged. It is Epiphany Sunday, and so gifts, well, today is the day. Please don't forget or fail to grab one of the nativity pieces as you head home. Please don't fail to grab one and let it be in your place a reminder of the inclusiveness of God's love for all people. It is not just a simple, common nativity we created this year, but one that represents our entire community. Take the gift of God home and let it speak to you and let your love speak to others. May you be blessed by the gift of new beginnings, this epiphany. Amen. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other 
I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And hey, it's all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so. is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. Mm. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I Sing of the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. All of my life, you've been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. So good with every breath. With every breath. Goodness of, the goodness of God. God. Yes, I am. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of Let us pause to center in. Let us pause in quiet to take time to lift up our own joys and concerns before our God. I will call you back with prayer in just a moment. For now, let us be in quiet prayer ourselves. Our God of all grace and mercy, we do sing with our lives and testify to your goodness, your faithfulness. You walk with us always, every moment. 
when we are stubborn and strong-minded, you are still present. When we are given to our own thoughts and ways and leave little space to consider others, you are still with us. In our challenging days and in our beautiful days, you are God Almighty, Holy One, Prince of Peace. As we enter this season of light, celebrating the light that you gave for us to find you, let that same light illumine our hearts, open our eyes. Over and over, O oh God, we hear that you bless and care for the poor and the lost, the empty and the alone. But so often we fail to make space in our days to do the same. We offer our mercy but fall short on doing justice. Move the needle of our lives, O oh God. Guide our hands to act and our feet to walk. We pray for those in our own congregation and community who are hurting and healing. We pray for those who regularly receive medical treatment for ongoing health concerns. We pray, O oh God, for those caregivers, for family members, for those who feel the weight of others in need. We pray, O oh God, for those who are unemployed and underemployed, for those who are struggling to even consider a future. We pray, O oh God, for all those on our prayer list. We join Kay in prayers for Lindsay and Tyler. We join Loretta praying for Anastasia. We pray, O oh God, for Susan and Terry, for Norm. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for those in our community and congregation. We continue to pray for places around the world, including our own nation, who are suffering with division, daily violence, and war. We pray for unrest in home and with family. Hear our prayers, O oh God. On this first Sunday of the year, wash away our bent towards sin and draw us again, O oh God, to your kindred family. Let us be a part of the beauty of creation for the goodness of all. We walk with the Magi toward the light of grace and cling always to your eternal love. We lift all of this and all that is upon our hearts in Jesus' name as we join our voices now as one to share the prayer that Jesus taught us to say when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go tell it, go, go tell it, 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 that Jesus Christ is
to remind you with communion, with Holy Eucharist, with this moment of remembrance, um, that all are welcome at the table. We are a people, we have a faith that comes from a tradition that welcomes all. This table is representative of that, the Christ who died for all and loves all. So whether you are a member here or anywhere, you are welcome to the table of grace. You are welcome to receive communion if you sincerely and within your heart seek God in your life. We share communion in this family by intention, which is coming up front, receiving a piece of bread, dipping it in the cup, and taking. You may hear the words, the body and blood of Christ, or the love of Christ, and you may respond thanks be to God, or just use a moment of prayer within your own heart. Please join with us now in our prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to God. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us all the days of our life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, O God. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offerings for us as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, on those gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we together feast at God's heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. A little loafy sourdough today. God's body and we give thanks. This is the cup of redemption which is poured out for you. May it be a sign and a symbol within your life. Frank, the body of Christ broken for you and the love of Christ poured out for you. Amen. Thank you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, for the bounty and the blessing of this table, we give you thanks. May this bread and juice nourish us and our lives in our walk of faith and with you. Amen. This is the time we move towards our call to offering and action. The call to offering and action is a particular thing that we do at our church. It is a reminder, it is specifically for us to remember to give back for all that we have received from God. There are many ways that we feel God's love in our life, our movement, our families, our friends. There are many ways that God comes to us and many gifts that we receive. This is the time that we make our plan, set our intention for how we will give back. We give back in many ways in this congregation, through our time, our talents, our treasures, through giving financially, giving with prayer, giving with service. I invite you to consider that now. How is it, as we begin this new year, that God calls you and moves your life to offer and to act in faith? Let me invite you, having set that intention, to join me in our prayer of offering, blessing all that we give. God of light, we take these gifts and present them with love. We rejoice in our ability to share, but long to do more. Help us to be like the Magi and carefully plan the gifts we bring you. May we not be satisfied with what is enough, but instead be inspired to do more. May these gifts be used so others may know the hope that is found in you. In his name we pray. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as you are able. Come forward as you are called. Let us sing for the beauty of the earth. dog bones out for communion, but I will take them down the aisle to the doggies. Friends, it is indeed a new year, and today we celebrate and we remember Epiphany. What is the call on your heart? What walk, what journey do you take? What light do you follow in your life? 
May you be blessed on the journey that you are called to. May be we a May we be a community of faith that supports one another in this journey. Go out into the world in faith and trust. In Christ's name, amen.